the fabric interconnect is not a switch by default. What does that mean? That means that I do not run spanning tree by default. I'd have no blocking ports on my UCS system. Everything is active active. So how does it prevent loops? Good question. Um, like I said, I'm not running in switch mode, but there is a thing called the switch mode. This doesn't change anything about my configuration of the system, but that means that it will start running spanning tray protocol. And it will interact with the rest of the network to run spanning tree protocol. So STP is a very important thing to, to know. By default, I'm not running it. And this is also the best practice by far. Run it in end host mode. This is called end host mode. Or EHM. And this is running switch mode. So I can choose either one of the two. Same account for the fiber channel part, by the way. I can run that in end host mode or in switch mode, but we'll come back to that later this, day, this afternoon. So I'm running in no switch mode or in end host mode by default. So I'm not running spanning tree. Technically, if you do a show spanning tree on it, you will see some spanning tree running and that's for the management part, but it's, it's not doing anything. But all right, that's the thing. It's not sending BPDUs to the network, that's for sure. My, my northbound switch will never hear any BPDU coming from the UCS by default, unless I change it. So how will it assign traffic then? How will it prevent loops? Well, first of all, I have port types in my system. So I have different port types. One of the port types is called server port, which means that I will connect a blade chassis to one of these ports. Those are my server ports. And I have uplinks. So server ports and uplink ports, those are my two most important server, uh, port types. There are a lot of other things to connect appliances to my fabric interconnect. So I can connect, let's say, uh, an NFS storage array to an Ethernet port or a fiber channel storage array or an FCOE storage array to my fabric interconnect directly and let servers in that UCS system talk with that host. So those are my appliance ports, but we will not cover that here because that's not part of the data center test. So I have ports that are statically assigned being a server or a uplink port. So let's say I have four uplink ports going towards my network. The first rule I have is when I see a packet coming into my system from coming from an uplink port, it will never go out on another uplink port. I will never be a transit switch. And also the connections going between the fabric interconnects are only there for those UTP cables will never carry a data packet. They only carry that database synchronization protocol, nothing else. So forget about them in when talking about the networking part. They are two separate switches or two separate networking devices. I always keep making the mistake saying switches. There are two different networking devices. Pay attention to that. Very important difference. So Traffic coming in on an uplink will never exit out on another uplink. It will either be dropped if there is no exit point or it will be forwarded out a server port. So traffic coming in on an uplink always goes out on a server port. And of course, if this is a broadcast packet that I receive from the uplink switch, I flood it on all my links, meaning all my server links. I never flood traffic from an uplink on another uplink. No packet will ever leave the switch coming from an uplink going out on an uplink. So if I have traffic flooding, traffic the, the packet coming from the uplink will flood on all these server links. Uh, that's the first rule. The second rule is traffic coming from a server port will always 
what can go two ways. So traffic coming from a server can go out on an uplink or it can go back to another server port. So local switching is supported for local blades. So all the blades in the system can talk to each other via the fabric interconnect. Local switching is supported for the local blades. <clears throat> so there are two exit points for traffic coming there. Now, how does this work? This switching mode, this end host mode, uses a concept known as port pinning. So a normal switch uses Mac learning. So when I receive a packet on a port, I learn about the source address, which is then probably that end host is being connected down here, down this, this specific port, that's Mac learning. End host mode uses pinning. <clears throat> or static pinning even. So coming back to the pinning, I'm using pinning to ensure that I do not have any loops. As I said, well, for, for flooding traffic, that's easy. First of all, I exclude the uplinks and then flood it on the server ports and I only flood it once on the server port. How does it work when I receive a new packet? <clears throat> on a new server. So let's say we have our blade server down here. Let's forget about the chassis and the cards behind it. I have a blade server sending its packet. Blade server sends its first packet. On that moment, I have four uplinks going to my network. Now the port pinning process will start working, meaning the port pinning process will select one of the possible uplinks to go out on my network. So traffic coming in from blade number one will now be pinned. So this is the pinning will now be pinned to this specific uplink. And now the traffic can go out. So the next time blade number one says another packet, that packet is also transmitted on this uplink. This is never changing again, unless something breaks, of course, unless the uplink fails or unless anything else fails, then I need to repin this traffic. But when the ports stay up, this is always gonna be the traffic forwarding path except for traffic which is destined for local destinations. So the Fabric Interconnect is aware about all of the Macs, all of the Mac addresses in the system. All of the Mac addresses are known in the Fabric Interconnect. So if Blade 1 sends a packet for Blade 2, also connecting here on another port, B2, the, the B2 Mac addresses are known on the fabric interconnect because of all the learning and all the traffic that it sees and all the MAC addresses that I can configure. So when I see a packet coming from a des a, a, come going towards a destination MAC, which is also connected to my system, I switch that locally and send it out on this port. But that's because I know where those things are, where those MAC addresses are. For uplink traffic, so for all the other traffic, I pin statically to a single uplink. So each network interface card in the blades pin to a certain uplink. Always a one-to-one -one mapping. The next blade coming in, so the next blade sends a packet that needs to go out on an uplink. I start pinning that to maybe another uplink. And that's how I load balance on several logical links. This is static, as I said, static port pinning. This pinning will stay there until something happens. And the only local switching supported is from server to server traffic. And again, no shared connection between FIA and FIB. So that's my port pinning. How do I connect my network?
not talking about the server connections right now, just talking about uplinks. So let's say I have two fabric interconnects and two network switches. Let's talk about Ethernet just first. So these are my uplink Ethernet switches, my top of rack switches, end of row switches, any switch that you can think of. That's my that's my uplink interface. So this is this 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 is considered the northbound switch. I call it the northbound switch because it's on top of the fabric interconnect. So it's north of the fabric interconnect. The servers are considered southbound connections. Let's say I'm configuring this topology because I always want diagonal connections. I want crosses in my network. I want traffic to go anywhere. So this is my fabric interconnect A and fabric interconnect B. Now I can stay, I can stick, I can let these uplinks be separate uplinks, just being normal ports, ethernet ports, not running spanning tree. So these, these are not switch to switch ports. This can be a trunk, of course, I can transport hundreds of VLANs if I want to towards the FI, but I'm not running a switch to switch connection. I'm just running a switch connection to a server that tends to have a lot of MAC addresses behind it. So I see a lot of MAC addresses coming on this port, but it's not a switch because it doesn't run spanning tree. So my northbound switches just see a lot of MAC addresses coming from their client. So this is just, if I configure this port in a spanning tree fashion, I would configure this as port fast or spanning tree port type edge trunk. So in the, net, in the Catalyst iOS, I configure port fast on my client ports, right? To overcome the waiting for the spanning tree timer. And on the NXOS part, I configure it as port type edge. And because I'm running multiple VLANs, I configure it as port type edge trunk. So I would configure these ports towards my clients to be edge ports. Now the port pinning, as I said, I pin that to a single port, but the fabric interconnect does support port channeling. So I can bundle links together in a port channel, meaning I can have multiple links treated as the same logical link. What does that mean for my port pinning? Well, exactly the same as it would be when I'm using normal pinning. So I have my blade system down here. That blade system now sends its first packet. And now that first packet is being pinned to any of the available uplinks. But because the port channel is a single logical connection, it will pin to the whole port channel. So if I have port channel of port channels available, I use those port that pinning to pin it directly to the port channel interface. And on the port channel interface, I will receive the packet and I will use my normal port channel load balancing, like I would on any kind of network link. So the pinning is now from server port to port channel port. So that is considered a single port. The port channel is considered single port. I consider that being loop free. So very important to, to, to consider that. So port channels are always, of course, having the lowest uh, failover times. Very easy port. Well, the default port type on an NXOS based switch is the port type normal. So this is the default. If I do not specify that edge trunk port, I consider it as normal. What is a normal port? A normal port is a port that waits 30 seconds before uh, accepting of traffic. I wait 30 seconds for receiving BPDUs. So I consider every port being capable of running uh, a connection to another switch. So therefore I wait 30 seconds for BPDUs to come into me. If I do see a BPDU, I can start exchanging it and I can do my spanning tree convergence. But because the FI will never send a BPDU, 
it just needs to wait 30 seconds after the port comes online before it can start accepting other traffic. So to enhance convergence times, the best practice is configure that as an edge port. So now, as soon as the port comes online, I told the switch that this is a edge port and this is not a switch. So trust that port and immediately start accepting traffic. So I tell the switch, trust it. And the normal type is normal. The default port type is normal. So coming back, I can use port channel features on the FI northbound to my network. And I pin now not only to a single uplink, I now pin to the port channel because I know that a port channel is loop free. It will use hashing internally, just like any other switch. Of course, that port channel also needs to be configured on this side. I need to have the same configuration there. How do I know that the uplink switch has configured a port channel? I know that because I'm running the LACP protocol. The LACP protocol is a protocol, config, is, is a protocol used to uh, exchange state information between two devices that want to be port channeled. So I exchange some hellos and I expect some things to see, meaning I expect the two links that I have in my port channel to see the same type of hello packets with the same identifiers and stuff. So port channels from the UCS system always run LACP. I cannot disable that. This is always on. As soon as I configure a port channel, so on a switch, on an NXOS switch, I would say channel group mode active or passive or channel group mode on where active and passive mean I enable LACP, where mode on means I do not enable negotiations. It's just static configuration there. But on LACP, that's an active and passive. That port channel coming from my fabric interconnect always has LACP enabled. So very important thing to remember when configuring your uplink, your, your, when configuring the ethernet switch here, Pay attention to when you are configuring the port channel down to EFI. You really need to enable LACP there. And it's running in active mode, by the way. So LACP active mode. That means that it always initiates the negotiation. It doesn't mean that you need to configure the other side as passive. Active and active talking to each other works perfectly. And it's even the best practice to have the links up fast enough. So port channels are supported. Now, in the NXOS implementation, we have a feature called virtual port channels. What are virtual port channels? Very fast. A virtual port channel means that I have two Nexus devices. So Nexus 1 and Nexus 2. And, and I configure a port channel between a third party device, so a third device and the two nexuses. Normally, a port channel runs between two devices, like here. I run, I run the switch here, I run a de network device here capable of doing port channeling. That's the same device, so these two guys can talk to each other. The nexus supports a feature called virtual port channeling. What that means is that I'm going to start combining these two switches and let them uh, so what they do is they will agree on certain settings, still keeping their own configurations. They will still be two separate switches, but they will now let the third party switch think that it is a single switch. So the LACP packets being sent on these two links will carry the same identifiers. So that third party switch thinks that it just connects to a normal switch to a single switch. So it will allow port channeling. And internally the nexuses will allow loop prevention and they have all kinds of specific rules, but be sure to attend a uh, CCIE data center bootcamp from us to learn more about virtual port channeling. But what I wanna, the point that I wanna make here is that because the FI is based on the Nexus 5548, that does not mean it supports VPC. So the Fabric Interconnect only supports 
port channels going up to the same device like this so on the fi i do not i cannot exchange information with the other fabric interconnect like i said the networking part of these fabric interconnects are independent fully independent they never share a single packet or a single configuration change with each other the only two people talking to each, to each other are the UCS managers. But the networking parts are fully separated. So no virtual port channel support on the FI. So I can never uplink my single fabric interconnect to two switches and make a virtual port channel. I cannot do that. What I can do is create a southbound virtual port channel. So what we say here is that in the northbound direction, we do not support VPC. So no VPC in the northbound direction. But we do support it southbound from the uplink switches. What that means is that if I have two Nexus switches, let's assume that these two switches, my uplink switches, are Nexuses. They, of course, do support virtual port channeling. So they will support the port channeling to a single fabric interconnect like this. So from fabric interconnect B, I create a single port channel. On the FIB, I have a single port channel. And on the uplink two switches, those are the Nexus switches. And they are simulating that they are the same switch. So they are virtualizing themselves as being a single switch. So I can make port channels northbound and a virtual port channel southbound from the ethernet switches down to the FIs. But again, I will always have, I can do that same trick here as well. So I have two different port channels, FIA port channel and an FIB port channel. Never going to share things with each other. So a very important thing to remember here. Virtual port channeling is only allowed when I have nexuses or only support it when I have a Nexus switch on top of it. It doesn't have to be virtual port channeling, right? It can be any multi-chassis port channel technology like VSS, virtual chassis, um, split MLT or anything else other than that. So any multi-chassis port channeling technology is supported to connect to it because all those technologies, what they have in common is that they uh, let the switch that they connect think that they're a single switch. So the connecting device, like in this case, the fabric interconnect doesn't know that it connects to two different devices. So this is a supported uh, design. Just not coming from the fabric interconnect. So these are my uplink scenarios. I can do local links or so separated links where I just pin the traffic to certain ports. So what happens on the uplink switch? So let's assume we have multiple uplinks, not port channeled, although in real life usually we'll see this being port channeled. So I have a switch and I have an FR. So I, I have a switch and a fabric interconnect. And I have two blade systems connected to my FI. So blade one and blade two. Two uplinks, not port channeled. What will this switch see when the port pinning happens? So let's say the Blade 1 sends a packet, it will select and pin to one uplink and will send the packet out. On the other blade, I will do the same thing. I send the packet, the pinning happens, it pins to that other uplink port and now sends traffic back. What will happen on this switch? Well, normal Mac learning, right? So normal Mac learning as I'm used to. So the, the, this port on this switch will learn the Mac from blade one. And this second port will learn the Mac from blade two. So just normal Mac learning. And the next time the, the packet is being sent back, the switch will never send packet for blade one, a green packet. It will never send it out on the blue link. It will always send it out on the green link because that's where it has a MAC address entry for. If it does not have it, it will flood it out all its ports and the FI will take action accordingly. 
So important thing to remember, normal Mac learning on my uplink switch. So those are my uplink scenarios, port channels or normal uplinks, no virtual port channeling.